Can I foresee a time when I will not be buying gold and silver? Probably not. I think I'll be buying some form of gold and silver until my dying day. However, I certainly will be reducing how much gold and silver I buy over my lifespan. And a lot of the gold and silver that I might buy later on in my life will actually be fueled from the purchases and then selling of things like silver or proof coins. So today I want to talk about my plans for gold and silver stacking over a lifetime and how much is too much gold and silver. Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here and a warm welcome to you all joining me for another Precious Metal Ramble. Now today I want to talk about how much gold and silver is too much gold and silver. How much should we look to accumulate and when should we look to accumulate it as well because of course holding this stuff for a long term i use the phrase pension stack quite often here on my channel holding it for a long time is the often better course of action and maybe getting in early and getting more of it early within that ownership period will yield better results that's dangerous because of course over leveraging oneself and going all in on something like a silver and gold product is dangerous and it's something that I would never recommend. Now in terms of recommendations, this is not a financial advice video. I'm talking about my own observations, thoughts, tips, hints and tricks as they relate to me and my situation. What's right for me is not necessarily right for you. And I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions on this subject down in the comments below. It's one of the reasons I make these kind of videos to get those brain juices flowing. Now the big topic that I want to focus on is this idea of front-loading your investments. Now, if you're like myself, perhaps in that middle stage of life, shall we call it, without being too particular about my own personal age, um, you know, it's definitely worth thinking about having more gold and silver purchased now than perhaps when you're in your mid to late 50s or 60s, looking at when that time might be that you retire. I use the phrase pension stack for a lot of my gold and silver. Now, that's not to be confused with the idea that these are a formalized pension scheme. They are just things that I'm saving. I'm putting my money into these now, and I've budgeted to the point where, unless there's a significant life change or emergency, I won't need to grab hold of these funds. But if there is an emergency, then gold is the safe haven. That's the one that goes first, because it's, to be quite frank, a lot of the gold that I have is massively in profit right now, because I bought a lot of it in 2015, 16, 17, when the price was a lot lower. But even now to this day, I am constantly buying new bits of gold for the stack. Proof coins will put to one side and I'll talk about those in a moment, but adding bullion weight to my stack right now, even though I have a foundation stack, is still, in my opinion, a good thing to do. And the reason for that is down to how I want to look at my gold and silver going into that later stage of middle age where I'm thinking about retiring. Now in the UK, for people in my age bracket, we won't be able to even touch any other pension savings until 57. And I don't know about all of you, but it's my goal to stop working when I'm in my mid to late 50s. I don't want to continue to have that hard graft to work until I am older, you know, I want to enjoy life. I want to enjoy family and houses and dogs and just live out my life in a quiet way. That's my life goal. That's what I want. I don't need to be a millionaire. I don't need to be driving a Bugatti Veyron or having a 25 bedroom mansion. I just want to be comfortable in my retirement and enjoy my life. And I'm sure that's a sentiment that's shared by a lot of people. So to do that, you, of course, need to bridge that gap between when you maybe want to stop working and when you want to actually get cash out at the other end. So whilst we are now young and you know working hard and getting all of this uh, energy out of our systems before we get to a point in our lives where it's not so easy or not so motivated to do so, we as a backyard bullion household are putting money away in the form of gold and silver. Now, it's part of a bigger picture, as it should be for anybody out there. I would highly recommend not putting all of your eggs in one basket. And when it does get to that other end of our lifespan, we will look then to maybe liquidate some of the gold and silver to subside on. And I've talked to length about how I feel that a lot of the silver that I have right now will potentially fuel the purchasing of that gold in the future. Now, that's all good and well for 
buying gold now, I'm holding it for 25, 30 years. But what about when I am 50, 60 even? Am I still gonna be buying gold then? And the honest answer is probably yes. So it begs the question of why then would I look to potentially be selling some of the gold that I've got at that later stage in life? Well, again, it comes down to looking at how you wanna preserve that wealth over time and the bigger picture of your own personal finances. If you're in this situation where you are fortunate enough to be able to look to retire early or at least stop working early and subside on other forms of income, then surely you can also consider that you might be requiring something even further down the line. If you stop working in your 50s, perhaps you're gonna need something when you're 80, and that's another 30 year period. Now we all hope and expect to live into our 70s and 80s and perhaps even 90s these days. And how that will look when we get there in terms of finances is anybody's guess. The world can change on the turn of a pin, let alone the turn of 30 or 40 years. And just by simply owning this stuff, I think is significantly important. So for me, as a stacker, I probably will be buying silver and gold coins until my dying day, I suspect, and anything that's left over at the other end will be, of course, handed down to future generations. But for me, it is this method by which I can also keep myself interested and busy. And, uh, you know, the investment side of things, you can have stocks and shares, you can have pension funds, you can have money coming in from state pensions, but being actively engaged in your investments, in your gold and silver buying, I think is really cool. And I enjoy it and I love it. And maybe even I'll still be making YouTube videos in 30 years time. Who knows? Maybe YouTube won't even be around in 30 years time. But the point here is that gold and silver are a long game. They are something to think about for that long term. And whilst you might see myself and plenty of other people here on YouTube buying silver and gold on a regular basis and adding you know ounces of gold to the stack every month or i mean i'm not in that category of every month but uh, you know over a course of the year i like to add you know at least five ounces of gold to that perma stack now i was buying more at the start and front loading that stack to get it started but right now five ounces a year is pretty good for the pair of us to put to one side and when we get to that other end of life we have the option of looking to release some of those funds or doing a Scrooge McDuck and just swimming in however much gold and silver we've accumulated over that time. But what's really important for me and for Mrs. Backyard Bullion is to have that diversity, to have that real physical thing, that connection to something that's real rather than just made up numbers on a screen. Now we're not in this sort of doomsday apocalypse, you know, economic collapse camp. I don't feel that that's something that's going to be an issue for us. Might be wrong, if I am wrong, so be it, I've got gold and silver. But I don't buy it for those reasons. I buy it to transport that wealth through time. And we could be spending this money right now on fancy cars and fancy houses and going out every weekend and drinking $20 cocktails. But we don't, we save money. And the savings that we have are represented here. Now, one of the other things I haven't talked about are proof coins. And proof coins for me don't sit within this pension stack. Uh, they very much, in my opinion, these hedges, these sort of risk investments. I'm not adverse to taking risks when it comes to investments and these kind of coins represent a really good way for me to have that. You know, in terms of, like, there's a lot of people out there who invest in cryptocurrencies, that's fine for them. But cryptocurrencies, in my opinion, have even more risk than things like a proof gold coin, because at the end of the day, this has a lower ceiling or lower, I should say, underlining, a silver lining to coin a phrase, gold lining, of its inherent value of gold. And over time, if you've got the right strategy for selling these, you won't lose money. You might lose a little bit in terms of how much you could have had if you had it in something else. But in my opinion, these are a pretty low risk, but higher risk than other bits of bullion investment. And those I think will continue for me over time. Can I foresee a point in the not too distant future where I will significantly slow down my stacking? Yes, there is, uh, I think. And that's somewhat taking effect right now. In terms of the silver that I'm buying compared with three years ago in a pre-Brexit economy and pre-COVID economy, I was buying more silver for my stack. Now, my silver that I'm accumulating is really coming from just good deals that I see on secondhand items on places like the Silver Forum or social media. There's some great pieces that I pick up and having a nice collection of kilo silver bars is a nice little intrigue for me. 
But again, they're means to an end, because I feel like that this stuff here will be liquidated one day for this stuff here. And a lot of what we're buying now is going to be transported into the future. So anyway, that is my thoughts on how I am targeting gold and silver purchasing in my lifespan, in my uh, next 20 to 25, 30 years, until I'm at that age where I might consider just stopping doing everything in life and just sitting back and enjoying the latter years. And I'd love to know what you are planning to do or what you would like to do or what your goals are when it comes to your gold and silver. That's one of the reasons I make the videos that I make, to get some interesting thoughts and opinions shared within the viewership. And if you're a BYB rambler and you watch to the end of my videos, thank you so much. It's really very, very humbling to have people who like to listen to little old me ramble on. I'd love to know if you're a BYB rambler down in that comment section. Otherwise, thumbs up, as always, a reminder there. It helps everything through the YouTube algorithm. And if you've not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button because we're closing in on 40,000 subs. We should be there within the next, I'd say, six weeks. And then we'll do a giveaway. So the sooner we get there, the sooner there's going to be an opportunity for you guys to win some beautiful silver. Otherwise, that is it from me. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you on the next video. And as always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.